You can't stay here in this prison. The authorities have released you. You must go. I beg your forgiveness, but please go. The magistrates desire it. We were given no trial at all. We were not condemned. We were beat unmercifully in public and cast into prison openly. It is unlawful to whip or deprive a Roman citizen of his liberty without a fair trial. We, we were told you were Israelites. We are Roman citizens and subject to Roman laws. So, to leave this prison, we insist that the magistrates who so flagrantly mistreated us as Roman citizens come here themselves, personally, and escort us out publicly. Well, I, I, I'll rush right out and tell their honors. They are Roman citizens? Oh, yes, Your Honor. Oh, this is terrible. It may mean our positions, perhaps our lives, if they complain to the Emperor about this. We'll rush to the prison this minute, try to appease them. I am so very sorry about the way we treated you. We, we did not realize you are citizens of Rome. We, we, we certainly do apologize. Please forgive us. We hold no malice towards anyone. Oh, thank you, sirs. Is there anything we can do? Yes. Perhaps I have a physician look at your wounds. No, thank you. The keeper of the prison has already done that. He and his wife. Oh, they are fine people, the keeper and his family. Come, we, we, we will personally escort you out of town. We must go to the home of Lydia. We are staying with her and her family. You may escort us there. But you, you, you will leave our fair city. Leave it? If you will, please. You, you see, our people have been aroused, and they may be again and, and harm you, so we, we think it best that you leave. Our Savior, when he was here upon earth, instructed us never to urge our presence where it was not desired. We will leave. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Paul, sir, do you consider our work in Philippi worthwhile? Oh, most assuredly, Timothy. Not only were the keeper of the jail and his household converted, but the news of the way we were treated and how our God miraculously delivered us from prison will be told and retold. More people will hear about it than we ourselves could have reached. And when we or some other Christians come to Philippi again, many will be willing to listen. Where are we going now? Mm, Thessalonica. Does it have any interesting history, Silas? It's just a large city that became the capital of Cassander, named for Alexander the Great's brother-in-law. It has the most unusual entrance called the Arch of Galerus, really three arches in one, beautifully decorated and carved with hundreds of figures. And, Timothy, my son, the city has an Israelite synagogue which will give us a place to start our ministry. <laughs> My dear fellow Israelites, the appearance of Silas and me would seem to indicate we have just emerged from some sort of battle. Oh, and so we have. A battle in the name of and for him whom I shall tell you about on this Sabbath day. The magistrates of Philippi saw fit to place Silas and me in their most confining and uncomfortable dungeon. During the night, God saw fit to send an earthquake to open the prison doors and loose our feet from the stocks. Today... I would like to talk about something God has done for each and every one of you, more wonderful even than the opening of the doors of our literal prison. As Israelites, you are looking forward to the coming of the Messiah to redeem you from oppression, to comfort you. My friends, I have important tidings. God has sent Jesus to you. Well, now let us search the scriptures. Let us each take a phase of his life and see what the prophet said. But Jesus was born in, um, well, not the most usual... Uh, Jesus uh, was born of a virgin. Now here, here is what Isaiah wrote. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. But Jesus was born in Nazareth uh, somewhere... Surely the Messiah would have to be born in Jerusalem. Jesus was reared in Nazareth, but he was born in Bethlehem. And my dear people, the place of his birth was foretold. Now listen. I read from Micah 5, 2. But thou, Bethlehem, Ephrata, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be a ruler in Israel 
whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. But Jesus was not accepted by the priests. Surely they would have recognized the Messiah. Now let me turn to Isaiah's writings again. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. But Jesus died. Surely the Messiah could not save us if he died. Well, surely you know that over and over again the death and resurrection of the Messiah was foretold, and only by his death could we be saved. Oh, yes, that we know. Uh, and you say Jesus rose from the dead? That is well attested to. About 500 people saw him after his resurrection. But death by crucifixion... Such an ignoble death, surely. Now, the prophet Zechariah wrote, One shall say unto him, What are these wounds in thy hands? And he shall answer, Those with which I was wounded in the house of my friends. So, you see, my friends, the entire life of Jesus of Nazareth, from his birth in Bethlehem to his ascension, fulfills in every detail those prophecies. Jesus of Nazareth is the Son of God. He now sits on the right hand of his Father in heaven, pleading for you and for me. Jesus has said, Believe in me, and you will be saved. If you believe in me, you will love me. And if you love me, you will keep my commandments. In closing, let me repeat what the angel said to the disciples as they stood and watched their loved master disappear in the clouds of heaven. Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. I want to be ready to meet him, don't you? <laughs> 